what uh, logistics opportunity inspires you the most? Could you start, please? Andres. I would say uh, a very trivial thing, but uh, today I find it hard to imagine it myself, but I would be most inspired by green logistics. The long chain of logistics from uh, beginning with the fields, um, agriculture fields, to the recipient of the production in Africa. We as Lenas Agro Group also take part in this logistics chain. And our goal is to have this in 2030. But today we have so many issues and questions as to how to achieve this. So this would be most inspiring. Uh, I'd like to stress that it's the long chain, as the mayor said before, the long chain. Christina now. Well, first of all, I would like to say that uh, in terms of the uh, increasing of the efficiency of the food chain, everybody says that logistics itself should be made more efficient. So efficient logistics, uh, uh, digital logistics uh, is the uh, big objective for me. I am greatly inspired by uh, the Vice Minister Agner, who mentioned the new term, synchromodality. A new term, but indeed, once the food starts moving from the place of its growing, without changing its uh, quality or parameters, this is uh, greatly dependent on logistics. So this would be my expectation. Agne, what logistical opportunity is most inspiring, inspiring to you? I feel uh, as if I had a, an advantage because I will say not only what inspires me, but I will also reveal our specific plans. Well. We are speaking a lot about innovations, about uh, drones and logistics chains, uh, but uh, we don't see anything in practice. Uh, we don't see anything of this used for commercial purposes. So I would be in favor of at least several pilot projects in Lithuania, in many, con in many sectors, both uh, drones, logistical chains related to food or other shipments where we could really and simply see the effect, then it would be much easier for us to take part in similar conferences. Yes, it is hard and difficult to imagine, but once we see things, it becomes much clearer. Thank you, Vladislav. What inspires you? Well, let me put it this way. I am inspired by the possibility that logistics can make uh, the world a better place. Uh, it uh, unites neighbors, makes them cooperate. It raises challenges and helps solve these challenges at the same time. Let us remember uh, COVID-19. Without logistics, I can't imagine how we would have uh, made it. So it helps us also to create a better and safer world, of course, on the condition, as colleagues mentioned, it, the logistics has to be green, safe and innovative. You are a logistical fundamentalist. Yes, indeed, I am. Thank you very much. Robertas, what are you inspired by the most? I would be inspired by the fact that you can be the one that cooperates and by doing small things, you can still contribute. You can contribute by creating a strategy. You can be in the knowledge of specific details that could help uh, find an optimal route. I'm happy about the fact that we have what to show. The port was among the first to implement digital systems that are used until today and improved. So we really have a stories to tell in a conference like this and even in a higher uh, scale conferences. 
the systems. Um, Novi Skip is mentioned by the management of the port are uh, really implemented. And thanks to that, uh, ships do not have to submit tens of paper documents. They are all submitted in one package to the agent. So we have what to boast of. Thank you very much. And um, now I would like to encourage you to like these statements on Menticom with a code. We want to create a digital document for this conference. And uh, I invite you to begin with the visualization. What could be the ideal integrated logistical chain? Well, we work hand in hand with Vladislav, and if I fail to fully uh, explain it, he will uh, uh, um, add to what I said. But I believe that in order to uh, receive an effect, a result from the chains of logistics, economic effect, you have to sacrifice something. And so far, uh, state companies are still talking uh, state and companies are still talking about how data exchange should look like because so far the biggest challenges lie in the areas of security and data exchange. In order to be able to send uh, an item without paper through different companies, through different, not through one company, through different transports, uh, rented and, and uh, and uh, load it all on time through this synergy among businesses we would have a big economic effect and benefits but for that we need a consensus and uh, we should also agree on at what level the data should be uh, exchanged and shared that is my vision okay so if we export uh, foods like Kennedy, who said this nation have to commit to bring man to the moon and bring him back safely. So in this line, what could you say in what sentence uh, to visualize the perfect logistical integrated chain? Well, <laughs> before the perfect one, we have to visualize the real one. Our group exports 2 million tons uh, through Baltic ports, we are among the biggest. And uh, in reality, the biggest shortcoming we have today is related with technological progress. Because many of our objectives and the objectives on, of Green Europe, the technological progress either allows or does not allow to do this. Today, we have a good moment because we have quite developed wind and solar energy. Uh, we have uh, automobiles, and this uh, allows politicians and countries to raise objectives and start moving towards them. But in other areas, there are no such objectives at all. For example, the initial agricultural production, our tractors and uh, harvesters, we have um, tens of thousands of them. In Lithuania, we use a million of tons of diesel fuel half of which in agriculture. We can talk a lot and share data, but without solving that, we will not solve anything. As we represent and work with the gender uh, case New Holland, we know that uh, no electric tractors have yet been produced. We ask all them, but John Deere raised their hands in defeat. When are you going to have it? We don't know. Uh, there are discussions about biomethanol tractors. We ordered it already, but it is simply not. It has not been built yet. This is a huge problem. That is why I was talking about the long chain. Because in some uh, segments of the chain, things are simpler, but for some, there is, there is no technological solution. Another example the heavy automobile transport, road transport. Um, our managers say, as soon as, as there are any on the market, we'll buy them. But out of the 2 million tons, 600,000 uh, have been brought by farmers to ports. 
in the past decade, the market changed a lot. 15 years ago, we would transport them on rail, but now each farm has a small drying facility and they want to bring it themselves. So I calculated that 600,000 tons meant 22,000 trips per year, 22,000 trips and 4 million kilometers. Can you imagine that? Just in order for them to feel safer, to get a better price as they imagine it. And we do not have a clear solution for this today. Even if we want to, to, buy, to, to make it, to achieve this at, at a greater cost, we, we cannot make this part of the chain greener. Of course, we can use the biodiesel, but that's it. So Kennedy, as you rightly noted, when he said that phrase, um, they didn't have a lot of solutions, but they managed to create them. So our goal is to create them as well. What could provide us with the hope that uh, such a dark situation, let's put it that way. So what could uh, make us hopeful that this situation has a way out? What uh, are the encouraging examples showing us that this is possible? Let me finish. I believe that technological development has uh, its own logics. Look how many computers are there. 15 years ago, there wouldn't be so many. And the phones have just changed without any support. Europe did not say that we have to replace all computers, uh, switch to, to them from faxes or teletypes. It just happens, but we have to follow science and research and the best practices, of course. So I believe that uh, the progress itself has to happen. How do we manage uh, passenger logistics? We take away cars from them, we force them to go over to bikes or buses. But if we are talking about huge volumes of gr grains that have to be transported, why can't the state uh, for the purpose of greening, could it uh, do something so that uh, 4 million kilometers wouldn't need to be covered? Or it could be the state or the business. It's not only about the state. Yes, in terms of the technologies, if they are economically beneficent, beneficial, beneficent, uh, it could happen without state interventions. And uh, there's nothing new, it's economy. But let's take two cases, the state, public and uh, business situation. We all know that in Germany, uh, heavy road traffic, uh, road transport vehicles are exempt from taxes if they use liquefied gas. Lithuanian companies operating on that market are all considering uh, acquiring such uh, vehicles. Of course, they have to reach Lithuania as well. And here in Lithuania, we have to think about whether and where we need this infrastructure for fueling these uh, the road transport vehicles in order to finalize the logistical chain throughout its entire length. The next uh, case example could be the company where, for example, Ikeo, Swedish company uh, that is uh, quite uh, environmentally minded and a part of their policy uh, environment is among uh, the key uh, pillars. And uh, there is an instruction that uh, they that uh, transport coming to them has to be green, mm, fueled by alternative fuels or electromobiles. In this case, while creating their added value of a company that is not only concerned about economic gains, but also about a green environment, creates an entire logistical chain that is forced to use green fuels and green transport and green technologies. But of course, they evaluate the situation through economic uh, perspective. But if the society um, accepts this and uh, they understand that they have to make a sacrifice in order for the future generations to live in a cleaner environment, this is efficient. 
we have to raise uh, the awareness of the public about uh, the sacrifices needing uh, to implement such ideas. I like to encourage you to ask questions. Please raise your hand. Robertus, what could be the role of the port in this logistical chain? How could the port facilitate its creation? The port, of course, could be the catalyst of logistical processes. We know these logistical processes and we have solutions as to their optimization. These solutions do exist. Some of them have already been used, but as uh, the representative of Linus Agro mentioned, recently we noticed um, alarming trends. For example, when uh, farmers uh, bring their harvest from the field directly to the port. Previously, they would first be transported to the uh, local elevator, and then by rail, it would be transported to the port. But uh, why has this changed? Because it is economically not beneficial because of high rail fees. So here uh, comes the state as a regulator, uh, who, which in this case obstructs uh, more optimal and greener logistics. We are raising this question as participants of this process and we are suggesting based on facts to uh, set uh, the most optimal system of uh, fees uh, to so that uh, people are encouraged to use the greenest uh, modes of transport I, I understand correctly do i understand correctly that you encourage uh, all stakeholders and the state to engage in optimal optimal regulation encouraging green logistics yes and we are doing this in many ways but not always our requests are, are being heard indeed eu member states uh, in EU, many uh, member states, uh, railways are subsidized, otherwise they wouldn't survive. And uh, by this, uh, the aim is to make the tariffs more competitive. Lithuania, as well as uh, other uh, some other member states, companies and railways that use infrastructure manage to generate the revenue that covers all costs and they pay dividends to the budget 30 million euros last year of course in terms of greening such questions may arise but uh, the situation with the transit that is greatly felt due to the difficult political atmosphere will uh, make us do this so one of the solutions could be promoting green logistics as well uh, how could innovative approach help uh, 20 thousand visits uh, trips and four million kilometers this is really big numbers what about innovative approaches? Well, I have a um, practical um, example. For example, river transport. We know that uh, we used to have it before. In all European countries, and especially in America, the main uh, uh, river transport is the main artery to, that carries uh, raw materials. For example, rain and the Danube in Germany. Uh, the crisis that happened several years ago in the green sector happened only because the water levels uh, subsided in German rivers. So the river artery, in this case, we can talk about the Namunas. Uh, three four million tons could be carried there 
garsą agnį ir agarsą. I would tend to agree, but as at the moment we have 1.5 thousand and we, we want uh, much more, uh, the change would be huge. So let us not think that much about volumes, but let's initiate and start the change. We have been, uh, we have set um, a, a aim to, to achieve big changes by 2024. So I believe that the direction is very clear. But let me reiterate, as policy makers, we uh, face um, every day while planning the new perspective and planning, we face the lack of uniformity in terms of technological development. But the Green Deal, the concept that is now used by all, it is also very new. What does this mean? It means that we are hearing from companies that technological solutions are not yet there, but the direction is clear to all. I'm happy about this, as is the state. But uh, as you said, we need more positivity, positive impetus. There are many areas where technological solutions are clear, and in four or five years, the price of these technological solutions would uh, decrease as well. Before my presentation and in other discussions, it's been said that technological progress or uh, leadership uh, costs a country a lot. And Lithuania, which is uh, a country of smart and hardworking people, has to be very rational in uh, evaluating the positioning of their investments in the short and ter long term perspective. So our choice is to intensify our investment into electric mobility and its development. I see the vice minister with whom uh, of energy with whom we work a lot together so, and into the solutions that are here and now and at the same time uh, set the direction in cooperation with the science, with the Ministry of Economy and Innovation, with the uh, Innovation Agency, uh, while looking for ways of promoting innovations in very clearly defined areas where the situation is as it is. Christina. Thank you, Agne. Christina, you haven't yet had a chance. What are your ideas? Uh, of course, uh, the European Commission says as well, uh, digitization, the Green Deal uh, means great costs. And first of all, the state uh, not only should, but must contribute to that in order to see these sectors transformed. On the other hand, though, I would like to mention the fact that uh, there is one side when we promote startups by the business and the state and we say that we need new technologies, let's try implementing them. And here's another side where a lot has been developed and today we can implement them in practice. And let me come back to the pilot idea. It's not new. And uh, let us also remember another thing. For example, uh, agri-food sector, as an example, this is one of the most conservative sectors uh, in general and the least digitized around the world. Uh, the same goes for the logistics in the agri-food sector. As a colleague Andrus said, uh, the situation is difficult in the uh, initial agricultural production. We have no electric tractors and the digitization is difficult. But I believe that Lithuania has every opportunity while being such a small state to put a, a different modes of transport into one chain. Let's make a pilot project in one or several sectors. I was very happy to hear about the port that already now quite a number of digital solutions have been applied. But um, uh, what about dro the drone uh, carrying the equipment and bringing it back? This is really cool. As Vice Minister said, let's 
let's go and do it and then we can measure and see how it works in practice uh, let us now see on the screen the uh, results of the vote uh, you will see it on the screen shortly i it seems that um, and uh, please help me read it maybe you can click on the on the results the uh, Uh, well, we have learned a lot uh, to work with the technologies during the pandemic and uh, uh, by, uh, I have uh, participated recently in the European largest project, which was meant for uh, the household's uh, digitalization. And this was one of the uh, biggest uh, projects, pilot projects that I have participated in. That was the uh, improvement of food logistics. And one of the most important aspects was that we will not be able to achieve anything if uh, we technologically develop only one part. Now, to summarize, it is only obvious that uh, increasing the pilot projects, that is the low hanging fruit and the success stories have the realistic uh, impact. Can uh, each of you say what can what a possible success project uh, you can imagine? As I have mentioned, uh, there are certain pilot projects that have been implemented for over a decade. Lubis, Protis, Kipis, uh, they have to be improved. And uh, the initiator should be the state as initially planned. The directorate was uh, the engine and the operator. And I believe this should remain if we want to. Uh, continue that. Speaking about uh, the about the intermodality, uh, we need to develop that and uh, encourage that. Speaking about uh, heat uh, engines, uh, the same technology may be applied applied in uh, uh, agriculture. And uh, I believe that uh, hydrogen technologies are also important, uh, which is used in ports. And uh, I think uh, this is the future of Vladislavas. Colleague Robertas has already said a lot. If we speak about green logistics, I believe that the, the uh, synergy is lacking between various uh, sectors. For instance, uh, the transport, which uh, has no certain technologies or energy, for instance, hydrogen or biomethane. And uh, I would like to see all those directions, including uh, energy sources and uh, and transport technologies, all of these have to go together and they have to appear together uh, because then we should not uh, uh, have to, to raise the question who is the first, the egg or the hen? And uh, we need to see an overall joint step towards uh, the overall logistics. Agnya. I would like uh, to see many success projects, not one. And indeed, many ask where we are going to spend RRF funds. These are additional funds. And uh, the Ministry of Transport has several priorities. One of them is uh, to establish the sandbox, which in itself has uh, a certain number of funds. And uh, the projects have to be discussed with the stakeholders. Here we can only draw the vision. And uh, uh, you shouldn't uh, get an impression that I am excluding a certain project because each project is important and we need to ensure the synergy of separate transport modes. I will be more specific. Uh, speaking specifically, one of my wishes would be to 
create a commercial green corridor for a specific commercial activity of drones. Well, everybody's going to see them. Yes, that would be the real application. Christine, I can only agree with the ideas expressed by colleagues. I would like uh, uh, to wish the um, vice minister to include as many social partners as possible when creating the sandbox so that uh, uh, there are as many offers as possible not uh, to reinvent the wheel. And of course, the technologies have to become cheaper. This is a very important issue. Uh, Andres. My major wish would be uh, to make sure that things have to be done what which are possible, and we should not whip ourselves for what we uh, which for what is not possible. We know that certain countries have their own strategies. For instance, Estonia, and as an example. I can give you a, a completed project that is the primary agricultural production, although they do not have the green tractor or um, uh, technology, but it is already digitalized. And uh, the smart agriculture um, means that we have analyzed 18,000 hectares and uh, there's an electronic uh, pen or tag uh, attached to the tractor and there's GPS uh, and technologies and uh, the driver only have to, has to uh, launch the tractor uh, to start the engine and the tractor uh, is operated automatically and the driver doesn't even have uh, to drive the tractor and uh, that means saving fuel, saving fertilizers and so on and this is possible. This is just an example, a very light one. Thank you very much for giving me the example. We thank the discussion participants.